Hello and welcome to another episode of ProfitCast. Today is July 6, 2014. I'm Dave Curry. And I'm Amanda Hayes. And we are the Thought Prophets. The Thought Prophets is an atheist slash secular group dedicated to the promotion of continuous learning, open discussion, skepticism, and science. You can check us out on our website, www.thoughtprophets.com. You can find us on iTunes and Podbean by searching for ProfitCast or go to podcast.thoughtprophets.com. You can follow us on Twitter by searching at ProfitCast. And you can join our discussion by simply searching... For Facebook, <laughs> um, you can join in our, our discussion on Facebook by simply searching for Thought Profits. And also, you can find our entire backlog of episodes on YouTube, again, by simply searching for ProfitCast. <laughs> oh, man. We have we way... We did it! I know. <laughs> I tried to make them better, but I just made them worse. <laughs> <laughs> but... Joining us tonight is another fellow prophet who has actually been hidden behind the scenes, pulling the strings of fate as the wheel of time turns on. <laughs> Kyra Donahue. Hey, guys. <laughs> and our special guest tonight is a woman shrouded in mystery, a true <laughs> investigator of the questions surrounding blind faith and ignorance. When she's not fighting against injustice as a modern-day Batgirl, you can find her... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> writing scathing twist under the handle at Nancy Drew PI. Welcome to the show, Nancy. Hi, David. Hi, everybody. Hi. It's good to have you. Yeah. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I just tweeted a few minutes ago that um, this is actually your podcast debut, and we are very excited that um, we are going to propel you to superstardom. So, congratulations. Thank you for your input. Because, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you tried to, uh, you you did a kind of appearance on uh, Amanda's show that didn't really work out too well, huh? This well, is true. Yeah. I, I, we had some technical difficulties, but to be fair, we kind of needed somebody last minute, um, so we didn't really give her enough time to actually, you know, prepare, so... But yeah, we're glad you're here now. It's super we're ready exciting. to go now, yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. So, Nancy, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> we're a little uh, slow today, sorry. <laughs> David, David is a little slow today. I am very slow today. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I was raised um, Roman Catholic. Um, with a dash of charismatic Catholic. So if you don't know what that is, basically we were Catholic on Sundays and you can imagine like Pentecostal on Friday nights. So, you know, the praise and worship music and the speaking in tongues and all that weird kind of stuff. Um, and so my family was very religious and I have not yet come out to my family. Um, only really my husband and maybe two other people in my life. Um, so Twitter has been a really big outlet for me. Yeah, and so how did you get started on, uh, like, how did you find um, like, like, that Twitter was your um, your method of speaking out? And, I mean, uh, how is it being this newly emerged player in the community while you're still closeted to your family like that? Like, we're not even allowed to use your real name tonight. Yeah, I mean, I know your guys' show is so huge. I did not want to risk, like, anybody in my family finding out, you know? So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a really great response. <laughs> A+. plus. <laughs> um, I'm sure you guys will be having me back all the time. But, um, yeah, so, I don't know. I just um, recently got into Twitter a couple months ago, and, I don't know, I think I just randomly searched for something atheist, and I was like, wow, there's like a lot of people on here, and I just got more and more into it, and I changed my Twitter handle to make it anonymous, and I, I only had like two people in my real life on Twitter anyway, um, so I just changed everything and hoped they wouldn't notice and kind of made it like my anonymous atheist outlet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really how a lot of people actually start out anonymously, and then, I mean, like, do you ever, do you have pl plans to... 
you know, gradually work into coming out, or <laughs> is that even a possibility with the how religious your family is? Um, I'm not sure. I really, really want to. It's it's been getting the more outspoken I become online, the harder it's becoming to you know to not be out in real life. Um. But it, it's really hard. The thing is, it's really about my mom. It's not even that um, I think that they would, you know, I'm financially stable. I'm married. I'm out of the house. It's nothing like that. My mom is just, I just don't think she'd be able to handle it. Um, I've, I've tried talking about it to some other people in my life, and they're just like, just no way, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it would either have to be like, I either have to keep it a secret for my life or I would have to convert her because I just, she's, it's like keeps her up at night that I don't go to church right now. Um, oh, wow. It's really bad and it just, it just consumes her life and I just, she would feel, like she has said to me that it's her job as my mother, like as, as a parent to get me to heaven and so like if she were to think that I was going to hell, like she would feel like, guilty for the rest of her life you know what I mean and I just mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do that to her like mentally and emotionally so um, I'm working on it I'm, I'm thinking about it I'm working on it but right now it's just I'm gonna hold off for now yeah that's Absolutely. that's totally understandable um, especially somebody as close to you as your mother and realizing how it would like ruin her emotionally coming out you really have to to do a cost-benefit analysis and see if that's something you're comfortable doing. Do you feel like you're really repressed around your family right now as far as what you can say? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've gotten to the point where I just kind of nod and smile at everything. Um, <laughs> I, I have argued with my mom about homosexuality. Um, I pretty much refuted every religious argument she could give me, and then it comes down to, oh, well, I just don't like them changing the definition. She's not comfortable with it. Whatever. But <laughs> as far as everything else, I just nod and smile. Um, I was actually over my family's house for 4th of July, and she runs a, a youth conference um, every year, and she was telling me about the speaker that they were having who had a near-death experience and, she, like, was before the throne of God and Jesus was there, like, all these things. I was, like, scrubbing <laughs> dishes, like, don't laugh, don't laugh, don't laugh. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> I barely made it through that. It was just bad. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> Kyra, you had a story like that. I don't know if you want to tell it, but you had somebody in your life who had an awesome, awesome story. Oh god! <laughs> you yeah. don't have to tell it if you don't want to. I just, I just, I no, think it's really well, common. Peer pressure. Now I, I want to know. <laughs> no, I, I was, I was raised Catholic too, but my family isn't overly religious. My grandmother was, but my my mom pretends like she's Catholic still, pretty much. She. <laughs> She'll uh, say grace at uh, religious or at uh, um, holiday dinners and cross herself still, but she doesn't go to church at all. And uh, I made the mistake of getting a little drunk at Thanksgiving dinner and came out to everyone <laughs> at Thanksgiving dinner <laughs> oh my God. Um, because my mom asked me to say grace and I just started laughing and. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, I don't believe in that, and it led to a weird discussion, and then we continued dinner, and she confronted me the next morning, and then she told me her uh, her personal reason for believing. Um, after my parents were getting a divorce, she was just exhausted and out of her mind, so very little sleep, keep that in mind, and uh, she said she just felt someone come down and hold her, and she just felt like everything was going to be okay. And she's just, she could go to bed after that feeling like everything was going to be okay. And that was her personal experience. And in my wow. head, when she's telling me that, I'm like, well, you, you hadn't slept in a couple days. So. Were you drinking at all during that time? <laughs> well, okay, and I just on, love honest, that mom. it was like being held. It wasn't even like metaphorically being held. Like she was no, literally, she somebody literally was holding her. <laughs> So and great. Well, how do you respond to that, though? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Like, how do you refute that? Well, you're crazy. That didn't happen. <laughs> right. so, well, I mean, my my mom kind of gave me the same little anecdotal evidence when I uh, initially came out to her, and when she told me her little story, I was just like, "Well, that's where the skeptic in me would step in." <laughs> it's just kind of. I don't think we can repeat that, so that's cool for you, but <laughs> it doesn't necessarily work for me. 
Well, yeah, and you're also kind of stepping on their feelings if it's something that, like, got them through a really right. hard time, and you're like, ah, oh, it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to be writing a blog post, I think, about some experiences I've had and some false memories, I think, where she, I think she, my mom, um, kind of twisted things that happened and put it into a religious light. Um, it's kind of complicated to get into now, but... Um, I just thought that was interesting, like the way that sh everything she does and sees and experiences is all through like this, like her god glasses. It's just insane. Huh. God glasses. I like that. <laughs> I know. <That's> cool. <laughs> so, I mean, going, uh, now, since you mentioned, you know, kind of your experiences that you've been having, I mean, since you're so new to the, to the community and since you've kind of become so active so quickly, I mean, like what has the experience you've had as a, a, a female atheist been so far since you're so new to the whole Twitterverse? Uh, female atheist in particular? Well, I mean, because they're supposedly so rare. <laughs> I didn't know that was that was a, uh, a thing. Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I'm friends with a lot of female atheists on Twitter, and it's, it's funny because I, it's funny to me to see... Um, the male part of the community get so riled up over like female issues, which I think is great. I don't know why I never thought that that would happen before, um, but I just really enjoy that, and um, I just really have been enjoying meeting people. And like when you lose your your religious community, it's like you have no one to talk to. Every mm -hmm. you you kind of have all of a sudden everyone is just kind of weird to you because everyone, you know, doesn't believe the same as you and so just having other people to relate to has just been awesome for me. Nice. Yeah, Twitter is is a great outlet for that and um, it I found out that I've connected with a lot of women who are atheists as well um, but it still seems like in like the real world there really aren't, I don't know that many women who are atheists. Um, I mean, I don't like get out there that much because um, I've got a gaggle of children, but um, <laughs> they're they're few and far between from from what I've come across. But on Twitter, you can find them all over. It's great. <clears throat> hey, David. Right. Yes. Can I just touch on um, the comment from Coranify Me really oh, quick? Yeah. It's really yeah. eating away at me. Coranify Me pod podcast says, did David just use a Robert Jordan Wheel of Time reference? I love you even more, David. And I would just uh. like to point out, yeah, Mr. Coranify Me, David used a Wheel of Time reference because Kyra and I are both very, very sincerely interested in the Wheel of Time. I have finished <laughs> the series, and Kyra is about halfway through the series, and David was just giving a little shout-out to our fandom in the Wheel of Time, so you should be loving us even more. <laughs> but what, what's even, but what's awesome about that is that I haven't even read the books. Exactly! <laughs> I knew how to do the reference. Yeah, no, that's good. But... I'm I'm really excited that that Coranify me likes Wheel of Time and now I love you even more, sir. I know, Paul. That's um, awesome. Bro. I just wanted to to point that out. All right. That was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> you need, I need you to do a little smoother transitions, David. Oh, it's like, Man, it's like silence like, is killing me. I'm like on mm. that. Um. Okay, well, I mean, we did bring you on here a little bit, Nancy, to talk about uh, the uh, the free Mubarak that has now become Mubarak is free campaign. Yes. Because uh, it seems like you were just very active in what was going on there, uh, on Twitter especially, and, I mean, like, you were the one who actually told me in our group about this, um, uh, who, who contacted me about this, and so, um, I mean... I guess if we want to do a little bit of a breakdown and how you got involved in that and just where what's going on with that right now for people who haven't possibly been on top of this. Okay, sure. So um, I guess a few weeks ago, uh, Mubarak contacted several atheists that he had communicated with on Twitter, um, including, I believe, Coronify Me, Godless Mom, and a few others. Um, basically, in SOS, he said... Um, you know, my family beat me up, they put me in, they drugged me, put me in a uh, mental ward in a, in a hospital where um, the conditions were not very good, and um, he said, I, 
I'm waiting for another doctor to come. I guess a, a originally a secular doctor or a more liberal doctor had examined him and said, no, look, atheism is not, um, I'm sorry, he broke away from Islam and became an atheist, told his family. They tried right. to counsel him, and then they um, then they didn't like that, did, didn't work. They did all that other stuff. So um, they had this liberal doctor examine him, and he said, no, look, atheism is not a mental disease. He's fine. There's nothing wrong with him. Well, they didn't like that, so they had a conservative doctor examine him who said that him changing to atheism was a sign of personality disorder. So that's how they were able to keep him in the hospital, okay. um, which was horrible, obviously. So Godless Mom um, sent out basically an atheist kind of roll call, like, we have someone who's in trouble who wants to help. And you know, a bunch of people got on an email list. Um, and then he said, I'm waiting for another doctor to examine me. If by Friday I'm not out, I want you guys to make a lot of noise, do whatever you can to get me out. So Friday came, he said, the doctor's not coming, I need to get out of here. So she sent out the emails to, it was like 100 people, um, everybody started tweeting and trying to um, make noise, get get these things known. Right. Um, and sh in the meantime, she did um, do a bunch of research. We found um, a contact in Nigeria, Bama Delhi, who um, is part of the Lagos Humanist in Nigeria. Is a um, humanist and I guess kind of atheist group, um, and so he was able to call the hospital, confirm that he was there. Um, we were able to get um, IHEU, the International Humanist and Ethical Union, involved, um, who was able to help us out a lot, put out a statement. Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, it seemed like yeah. uh, all of this blew up so fast, and I mean, like you were seeing it on you know CNN and BBC all over the place. Uh, yep. And I think that uh, this is actually a perfect spot to grab Cordy's question here. Um, you know, before we were able to actually, you know, confirm that this whole situation was happening, um, Mr. Cordy Mendoza asks, uh, how do you feel about the people that were overly skeptical about Mubarak's situation? Um, I knew this was going to come up, and, and I was, like, trying so hard to be, like, nice about it and professional about it. But mm -hmm. the thing was, I, I understand we're all skeptics. You know, that's why we're atheists. I, I totally get that. Um, we had confirmation from the from Bob at IHEU that Bamadeli, our contact in Nigeria, was... A legit person. He was involved with Lagos Humanist. He was highly recommended by one of the biggest activists um, in, in, I think it was West Africa. Mm -hmm. um, so we knew that that this person that was doing the groundwork for us in Nigeria was a legitimate person. But there were skeptics in the community and people pretty high up in the community do that you want to drop some names here uh, I not I'm not going to do that I'm not I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to be nice I'm sure uh Karanify me can can do that if you would like um <laughs> drop it in the Q&A Paul <laughs> <laughs> but um um but yeah so they basically said that Bamadeli was this Nigerian unknown person and we were like, no, we ha we know that he's a legitimate person. You're just saying because he's from Nigeria, which you know, scam capital of the world or whatever. <laughs> we're not gonna listen. We're not gonna believe anything any one person from Nigeria says. Yeah, and, and it I was mean, just, yeah. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Uh, but well, okay. Um, I was <laughs> just gonna say. I mean, it would be one thing to be skeptical of someone if, like, um, you know, M Mubarak was coming out to contact people and say, "Send me money." Right. So that I can get out of this situation, but no, he was just saying, "Make noise, right? Make exactly. This noise. Get was, this a spotlight on this." I was just gonna ask that, like, why are why would people be so skeptical? Like, no, I'm not retweeting. That's too much fucking time. I'm not gonna do that because this guy's probably a liar. Like, what they, do you have to lose? They right? literally, they literally said that they thought that that the because we ha we had a we were able through the campaign we were able to get him a lawyer um, to go to the hospital and try to. Um, you know, start some, put in some motions and do some stuff in order to get him out. You know, mm -hmm. there's laws on free movement. You should, we need to know a reason why he's not allowed to be free and move around and get out of the hospital. Um, they thought that Bamadeli, the humanist, the lawyer, and Mubarak were all in, in on a scam. Even when we told them that 
IAGU knows Bamadeli and he's a legitimate person. They kept saying, oh, well, he's Nigerian. That's all it was. Wow. <laughs> what? It was wow. really upsetting to us. It really was. Um, and then they got some unknown sources and decided to to back us up. And by that time, it was it was pretty much too late. We already knew he was getting out. Wow. Jeez. So. And so, I guess, well, uh, what's the situation that we have going on now? Right yeah. now, he... Yeah, right now, um, so he was able to be freed because of, a, of a, the hospital went on strike. I guess the workers went on strike. A lot of the patients were freed. The lawyer was poised to, like I said, um, put in these motions to be able to free him. Um, but because of all the publicity, we were on almost every major news network. Um, Bamadeli did interviews with BBC and all kinds of radio shows. Um, because of all the attention... The family, instead of just moving him and locking him up in another hospital, they're mediating with the lawyer and basically letting him go. So with all the attention, he's in hiding. Um, he's getting tons of death threats on Twitter. If you if you go look at his Twitter, he's retweeting all the death threats he's getting. Wow. Um, it's horrible because in Islam, when you're an apostate, the penalty for that is death. So right. these people are saying, well, you should be... You should be dead, and it's really a shame. But so he's in hiding. Um, his future plans aren't being publicized right now for his safety. Um, so right now he's just laying low and and hoping that things kind of die down. Yeah, I mean uh, the obvious, you know, next step is to get the fuck out of Nigeria. I mean, <laughs> to be gone. You know that is just ridiculous. That you know that you can just have a difference of opinion when it comes down to a belief. And people want to kill you for it. It's well, yeah, they're extremely serious about it. Um, oh, I have, I have a question. You said that the campaign was able to get him a lawyer. Did people like pool their money, or was it kind of like a public defender sort of thing? How did he get a lawyer? Okay, so um, I believe just from publicizing it, maybe somebody contacted um, Bamadeli, the the humanist in Nigeria. I'm, I'm not 100% sure how that came about. We were not able to pay him right away, and that was part of the thing. It was like, how are we going to pay this guy? The second we ask for money, the skeptics are going to freak out and be like, see, hmm. we told you so. Right. Um, <laughs> but actually, we do have um, a donor... I don't believe we're allowed to publicize who it is right now. Um, we may be able to eventually, but his, the um, the financials are going to be covered. Nice. Oh, good. Wow. That's and funny. I do, if you guys don't mind, I want to read part of his statement that he gave um, after he was free, if that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Go for he, it. He said he, he's just such a gracious and really strong person. I just admire him so much. So he said, I thank you all for the concern and advice. To those who have made threats against me, I urge you to reason and learn to tolerate opinions other than yours. Education and free speech cannot be cured, but love for humanity is our panacea and we share the same destiny. All I have said is in goodwill that we may all prosper and learn the facts of life. So he just has so much like goodwill towards these people that want him dead. And his family, he's trying to reconcile with his family after all that they did to him. And I just admire him so much. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, great. Um, yeah. Seems sorry, like, uh, well, it just seems like he's almost in this point where you know, he just feels sorry for these people. Which, you know, I, I feel that way sometimes also. It's just that you know, they've been duped so badly into these beliefs that they would do this to their own family. It's ridiculous. Yeah. He just wants his family to accept him and just yeah. be able to, you know, accept him as wh whatever he believes. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so if people want to um, follow him on Twitter, do you know his handle off the top of your head? I have it here, but you can say yeah, it. Yeah, it's um, at Mubarak Bala. So it's M U B A R A K B A L A. Not people, not, not everybody is. is Great at spelling, but like, like <laughs> that's yeah, Steve. And I'm talking Steve about my husband struggling. specifically. My he <laughs> would would be like M O O B E R B K what <laughs> B K Y huh? <laughs> yeah. Um. So we have uh, another question here from a uh, Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul from Coranify Me. Um. Without naming names, Nancy, what was your greatest frustration with the secular community during the Mubarak situation? Um, 
Ab absolutely, the fact that after the, there's a difference between skepticism and incredulity. Incredulity, um, <laughs> you know, we provided, we we gave them this evidence, and we said, look, this person from Nigeria is highly recommended by the. It's Leo Igwe is a is a big um, activist over there, and he's very well known. Um, we had the statement from Bob from IHEU. And they just wanted to say, oh, well, he's Nigerian, so it must not be true. And the fact that they publicly called Godless Mom irresponsible, they publicly said, oh, it's a Nigerian scam, they were just rude. And it's like, you can talk to people without being rude to people. And I just have always had a, had a problem with that. Yeah, plus it's like, for, for them to immediately say that it's a scam because it's from Nigeria, like, really? You are supposed to be against prejudice, and that is exactly what you're perpetuating by immediately writing him off. And what's a retweet? I mean, really, it, nobody's yeah. asking you for money. Exactly. Serious, yeah. Especially some of these people who are doing, like, hundreds of tweets a day. It's like, one tweet out of your next 400. Why not? Well, yeah, especially if they can sit there and bitch about it, um, saying that they're not going to do it because they're just so they think it's such a scam, whatever. And publicly, publicly arguing with us about it, um, and and then at the end, again without naming names, I guess this would be my biggest frustration. Mm -hmm. At the end, they came in with a completely unnamed source. They had someone who said, "Oh, I have contacts over there." Um, and they wrote up a blog, and they had this unnamed source, which we had named sources, and they believed this person over us. It, it, the whole thing was just ridiculous, and that was, very, that was the most frustrating because we provided you with real evidence that you would rather believe this unnamed source than the, the people that we had because this person was Nigerian. Like, that just blew my mind to me. And so they were almost taking credit, saying that they did their own research this whole time. Um, it was just, oh. the whole thing was silly. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. That's some pretty awesome skepticism you got there. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's borderline asshole, I think. I think so. That definitely <laughs> would fall into the asshole category. Well, the, the unnamed source must have not been Nigerian then. Of course. Well, yeah. it's funny because I'm actually, we're like 90% sure we know who the unnamed source was, and we already had that source, and we told them we couldn't name them because their identity had to be protected. Um, so it really was no wow. new information that they were getting. They were just taking credit for it. Wow. wow. Ridiculous. That's great. Really feel like we uh, we halfway need to name drop on this person. <laughs> oh, David, David's just trying to get more watchers. I I just want to know because I I never I didn't actually see who was being so skeptical about it, but I've I've heard the stink, I've heard the stink afterwards. Scandal covered. You heard I, was it here at gonna I was gonna say that scandal in the atheist community. You heard it on Profitcast first. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> Awesome. Shoot. All right. So, do we have so. any other um, questions for her before we get to the comments? Kyra, did you have anything to ask her or mm. talk to her about before we get to our friends here on the comments? Uh, no. She's okay. pretty thorough. Yeah, I was yeah. just gonna say that. I'm uh, speechless. Okay, pretty David. Awesome. Take it away. Right. Um. All right. Well. We'll just um, oh, Paul still loving on uh, Robert Jordan here, <laughs> as he should be. Oh. No way! I love you two even more. Time for a Robert Jordan threesome without David. Oh. I like how you said that. that. Is that your Paul impression? A little yeah. bit. <laughs> That's well, awesome. when he's not including me in you know activities, sure. I uh, kind of want to know what a Robert Jordan threesome is. What do you think it is, Kyra? Let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we just get together and read aloud? I, that's what I was thinking. That's the sexiest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> um, okay, and Paul also wants to second, okay. <laughs> second everything that you were saying. Um, apparently there, Nancy, I'm not sure what exactly he's referencing, but you were saying stuff that he wants to second. 
And he likes it. He likes everything that you're saying. I'm trying so hard to uh, to be very professional about it. We've all been kind of skirting around the names the whole time. We're trying to be. We're, we're we don't want to stoop to to that level. Um, we're trying to be take the high road here. So being being the bigger person, completely understand that. Yeah. Especially when somebody is like, I can't even imagine that. Where you're gonna sit here and say that you know you're skeptical and you know you need evidence to believe in things, and when you have just so much evidence saying, this is not a scam, people. We're not trying to steal your money. This is a person who is in trouble. Help. Right. And, and the, you're still the, gonna turn your nose up at them. Yeah. <laughs> the fact you. that they were high up in the community, they could have reached so many people. And they just, they just didn't, they didn't want to believe, and it, it was just, it was hard for me to believe, and I was, I was I lost a lot of respect for some people the, this last couple of weeks. Mhm. Mm yeah, I, I mean, like when, when it comes down to those kinds of things, uh, like the moment that you sent that email to me, um, and I checked it out a little bit, it was like, it, it wasn't hard for me to believe that something like this was going on in Nigeria. Um, and so it was like, you know, I better safe than sorry, I'm going to get myself behind this and find out that, you know, it was a scam instead of not getting involved and having something horrible happen to someone who needs our help in the community. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, yeah, that was pretty much, um, everybody who was behind it, that pretty much was the attitude. It was like, all right, we can have a little egg on our face at the end of the day, um, or we can have blood on our hands. Yeah. So it's kind of, you got to weigh, you got to weigh everything out. Yeah, and uh, another comment here, Mr. Kevin Stewart says that Dell is extremely reliable. Great of him to put his voice behind this. Dell? Is that Bombadelli? Not sure. Possibly. <laughs> Delhi is a D-E-L-E? -E. It's just Dell, D-E-L, like the computer? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm get, I'm assuming that's Bamadeli, and he is. He's. Um. I've interacted with both him and Mubarak previously on Twitter before I heard about this. Um. <laughs> when I went and looked up Mubarak's Twitter handle, I was like, oh yeah, like I recognize his picture. I recognize his his handle, and that's part of what drove me to do this too. Was that it was like I know that I've interacted with this person before, and if this is a con, it's a long. Very long con because he's been on Twitter for months and months. So, <laughs> right. Uh, and so, I guess, I mean, do you feel satisfied with the situation? Like, um, you know, everything that was done to try and get him out of here and like the timeline? I, I personally think that it could have gone faster. Of course, I really wish that none of this would have happened at all, but. Yeah, it's very difficult when you're dealing with. I mean, you have so many different people in different in different countries working on this. Um, you know, we only had one or two people on the ground that were able to really be there and work on this 24/7, and they were amazing. I, they're putting themselves in danger um, by helping out this cause. Um, but yeah, we have the the lawyer can only do so much. Um, you know, I don't know how much you guys know about U.S court stuff, but um, <laughs> things don't happen overnight. Um, you know, they have to see a judge, they have to file a motion, things like that. Um, of course I wish it could, go to, could have gone faster, but it was. Just, I'm just happy that the hospital went on strike, because I don't know how much longer it would have taken um, if the hospital didn't go on strike. You yeah. had said earlier that um, they released other patients. Why did they release other patients? What does that mean? Um, the so what happened was I guess the workers went on strike and they had nobody there to take care of people. I don't I'm not really sure if they were transferring patients to other hospitals or what was going on, but they basically had no staff from what I could gather. Um, and I'm assuming that since he wasn't like on life support or something like super neat, you know, necessary, um, I'm assuming that they could let him go because of that. Hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully all those other patients were all right. They just, like, pushed the bed out to the street. Sorry, <laughs> suckers. There's nobody here to take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I am also very glad that um, you 
definitely you and Godless Mom kind of championed the cause and and stepped up to the atheist community to make people more aware of it. Um, that was it's really amazing because you guys spent obviously a lot of time um, research, looking into it, getting the word out to people. So I think it's terrific. I really can't take too much credit. I Godless Mom really did so much. Um, she, and her and there was a few other people um, at Virtua Rat. His name is Andy. He did the petition, which we got over 8,000 signatures on, which was amazing. Um, so many people worked on this. Really, I was just in the right place at the right time. I actually am a private investigator. Um, I sit in my car like eight hours a day, and so I really can be on Twitter all the time. Um, so I really just, <laughs> I just have a, happen to have a job where I could be on my phone all day, and um, I was just able to do it. Like other people had to drop out because they had kids. You know, Godless Mom couldn't be there 24/7 because she had to take, you know, she had to feed her kids. She has, has a job um, where I was just able to just be like tweet, 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 tweet. Mm -hmm. um, so it really, you know, I can't take too much credit. There were a lot of other people that did a lot of work on it. Um, I was just in the right place at the right time. So. Awesome. Still, you did great. Actually, yes. <laughs> very commendable. And that's that's funny. You re completely reminded me um, that yeah, you're actually a private investigator. Like your name kind of hints towards what you do. Yes, that is just insanely awesome. I, I cannot even describe just how freaking cool that is. Like I, I imagine you, you know, with the actual, you know little magnifying glass and the whole Sherlock get up but <laughs> if, if I if I dressed like Sherlock people would realize I was following them very quickly yeah. so it, it, that really wouldn't help yeah uh, so I guess basically you know like what what do you do on a daily basis like are you like go to like look and see if people's husbands are cheating on them Right. <laughs> um, some of my coworkers do do that on the weekends. Um, I actually, <laughs> right now I do. Um, it's a lot more boring than you think. I do uh, workers comp and uh, disability. So people who oh. may, may or may not be faking the insurance companies. Um, awesome. So I sit, I sit in my car eight hours a day and wait for people to come out and do things they're not supposed to do. Wow. Yeah. Awesome, like a guy who says that he's holed up in a wheelchair, but then, you know, he's, like, jump roping. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I've seen people do some pretty ridiculous things, so... Well, what is the, the uh, I guess, uh, on the cases that you're working so recently, what's the craziest thing that you've seen so far? The craziest thing I've seen... Uh, um, this, this one guy knew... He knew that... Sometimes, most people, like, if, think about it. If you go to the store and, and you cash out and you walk out of your car, you don't remember what your cashier looks like. Um, most people don't pay attention to the people that are around them. So if I'm following them, they don't, they don't realize. You don't look at other people that are in the store with you. So most people aren't aware of their surroundings. Um, sometimes with... with uh, surveillance, like if you have somebody, a friend that went through it, they, they'll tell you, oh, by the way, be careful when you're outside because they might have somebody watching you. Hmm. So, so this guy knew when he saw a car on his street with tinted windows that we were probably sitting there watching him. <laughs> um, but we were able to trick him into, uh, it's, I'm not going to go into it, but we were able to trick him into not realizing that we were there and got like 45 minutes of him doing all kinds of stuff playing with his kid, kicking a ball. You know, the other days he was, like, limping and, like, acting like he was real in pain. And then uh, just doing all, you know, doing pull-ups at the playground with his kid. And, like, just, nice. like, everything you weren't supposed to be doing, he was doing. And we were able to trick him into thinking we weren't there, so. How does that work, then, when you catch them in a lie? How do you bring that evidence to them? I don't, like... So you just tell them like I got I got you on camera, bitch. <laughs> Run out of the car with all the lights and cameras. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not like cheaters. Um, no, I, this is actually the part of that I like about my job is I don't have to deal with all that stuff. Um, I just take the video, I send it into the to the insurance companies, and they decide whether or not the person was violating their their uh, treatments or whatever because if you think about it if like let's say Amanda and I are both working at the same job 
you know, she could say that, oh yeah, this person was definitely violating their their restrictions, and I I would be being real about it and be like, well, you know, she was limping or whatever. They would always say, Amanda, I want you to always work my cases because you always say that they're violating their restrictions. Right. So ethically, I feel much better not having to make those decisions. I just film what I see, I send it off to them, they make the decisions. So right. Yeah, I that just what I can't imagine getting that phone call. You know, like when they're trying to like make this claim and then having somebody call you. Like I get really uncomfortable with lying. I like start sweating and it's like really hard to like breathe normally. And so I just can't imagine that if I was lying about like an L and I claim or something and then they called me to be like, Well, you know, you were doing this like catch me in the lie, I think I would die of embarrassment. I think I would I would start crying on the phone and then I would just like Go and they, hide in a corner. <laughs> they would actually, it would be even better because they would take you to court and play it for you in front of everybody. Oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> that would be terrible. No. <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh, man. Wow. That is a really, I mean, you say that it's it's kind of boring, but even for those, I think that's a really interesting job. And, yeah, I would love to sit in my car all day and just, like, people watch. Right. <laughs> best. I have seen some people that I was like, I think they're cheating on their their other person. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't there for that, but I was like, maybe I should like, you know, make a copy of this and like send this to the wife or whatever. <laughs> Anonymously. <Wow>. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just to let oh you know. <laughs> That's crazy. Wow. So you, you've never had to, like, go to court and testify for the evidence that you submit? It's just kind of they take you at your... At I haven't court. yet. Um, we are... That is part of our job. If, if it goes to court, we are supposed to go. Um, I've been doing this uh, over a year now. I haven't yet been called to court, but that is that is a possibility. They probably just of... the evidence, and it's like, well, fuck. <laughs> we're not, not going to invite this. You caught me. <laughs> you caught me. Forget it. I don't want that money. Um, what do you, what kind of training did you have to get for that? Like, does it require? <clears throat> wow, I can't talk. Like a four-year degree. Yeah, um, I have a degree in criminal justice, and um, I have a minor in psychology. I had to fly to North Carolina, and um, we did a week of training. I was mostly in a class with, it was a couple of people like right out of college, and most of them were like retired cops, security guards, and other people that had been doing insurance for a long time. Um, but yeah, so it was mostly like classroom stuff, they taught us stuff, and then we had like a week of field training where you sat with another investigator and they gave you all tips. And they would be like, bring like, buy wigs and buy hats. I'm like, I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not going to wear a wig. <laughs> I was like, I don't think so. No, that was the tips that they gave you? Is that like... Yeah. Oh I, was like I, was, I was like laughing, but they were being dead serious. I'm like, I'm not putting on a wig. Forget it. It's like a movie. Like... It doesn't seem like people would actually do that in real life. They're like, no, I it's not gonna be a wig. I, would totally <laughs> a wig. I, would <laughs> I know you would, David. Yeah. Serious David and like the big like... glasses and everything. <laughs> the Groucho I... marks with the mustache and all. <laughs> yeah. That's like. I don't. I don't remember what the movie was. Um, I think it, Pineapple Express. Yeah, I don't know if you guys saw that, but just thinking of that, Seth Rogen <laughs> was the process server, and so he had all these like crazy ass disguises to go and serve people their paperwork. Like it's so badass. So I loved it. <laughs> anyway, hey that David. Pretty awesome. Hey, what? Can we talk about Hobby Lobby? I know. We have 15 more minutes left oh, in our man. episode here, and although we would like to just talk about how sneaky you are here, Nancy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, this has just been outrageous. Um, Amanda, if you want to go ahead and lead us into this, since you know, you're pushing for it so much. Oh, I wasn't pushing for it. I just wanted to make sure that we got it in. Um, Absolutely. So, Kyra, if you want to go ahead and lead us into this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're the co-host. All right. Um, okay, so it's it's old news by now, um, and I if, it almost feels like, you know, we shouldn't even need to be talking about it anymore. David, did you, I think David wrote this. I'll, I'll just read off of our little document here. Sure, By now, this is, this is a dead horse that has literally been beaten to a bloody stain in the grass. <laughs> Sorry, 
no, no, there's there's a note here. Sorry if graphic, but still, <laughs> it is something that should be talked about until something happens to change this. Um, so, yeah, we all kind of know what happened. Um, was it Monday, Monday or Tuesday um, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of Hobby I, Lobby? I think it was Monday because yeah. I remember coming back from being off the grid for four days to hear this bullshit drop. <laughs> it, it was, was like, mother fuck, you have got to be kidding me. They have to do this the, the day that I'm out of town. I know. You just have to, like, rage, like, Monday morning. It was terrible. Um, but, yeah, they ruled in favor of Hobby Lobby, which essentially wanted to deny some forms of contraceptives um, to their employees based on their religious, um, religious ideals um, because Obamacare... Um, Affordable Care Act requires them to cover contraceptives for women, and they wanted an exemption from that. Um, and because they're they're a family-owned company, and their religious beliefs were strongly or sincerely held, I believe the sincerely held religious beliefs. They they ruled in favor of Hobby Lobby, um, so they are able to deny their employees certain forms of contraception now. Um, which is bullshit. I mean, they're a huge company. Um, they do have a lot of employees and a lot of locations. And so not only do I feel really terrible for the employees who have to deal with this, who likely don't make very much to begin with, but it what really worries me is the precedent that it's set for mm -hmm. all of the other companies to come forward and cite religious reasons for denying any number of benefits. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's you know the the part that's most frustrating for me because last week, you know, just days after this hit, there was a story that I found in South Carolina where a barbecue restaurant owner um, claimed that it was re within his rights to refuse service to blacks based on his religion. Oh my god! And I mean, that's something that is valid under this ruling. He uh, a quote that was saying that he had was something along like he just wants to show that he's a God-fearing, Jesus-loving Christian or something, and his sincerely held beliefs is that, like, fucking... Something racist. Something racist towards blacks. And it's like, <laughs> that's fucking stupid, man. That is not a sincerely held belief. That's just a excuse for you to discriminate against people you don't like. Well, and it would be interesting to see, um, it is going to be interesting to see how many new cases come forward and just how far it's going to go um, with all of the crazy exemptions. Because when, I've been saying this for a long time, um, even before this, and one of the things that bothers me the most about this case is them using the term strongly held or, um, what was the other one you said? Sincerely. Uh, sincerely held religious beliefs, and that is so subjective. How mm. can you tell what is a sincerely held religious belief? I mean, I saw, this is probably a stupid example, but I saw somebody on Tumblr who had said, well, I have a very strongly held religious belief that I shouldn't have to fucking pay for schooling, so I'm not going to pay my student loan. <laughs> it is very I strongly that, yeah. held. <laughs> and I, t I would totally agree with that. I don't want to fucking pay my student loans. <laughs> so I, I just, like, how do they determine what's strongly held? Does it have to be, first of all, does it have to be, like, a really popular religion like, you know, Roman Catholics or, or Christianity, um, or can it be like like actually anything? I mean, that's what I that's what I'd like to know. I'd well, like yeah, to find I out mean, it, how like, far they're gonna extend that religious it, freedom. The Scientologists beliefs that, you know, antidepressants are, are against their religion, you know, are they gonna allow that is um, like uh, Jewish in uh, Muslim beliefs they are against anything with pork, which actually goes into a lot of our medication and um, you know, like IV drips and things like that. It's it's fucking stupid, and that's the part that another part of this. Everything about this upsets me. <laughs> that, um, an, another part is just that the poor, poor science that Hobby came, uh, Hobby Lobby came to with this, where like you know, claiming that condoms is a form of of abortion, you know, that any kind of contraception is a form of abortion where it's like the the medical definition of being pregnant is once the egg actually plants itself in the, you know, the uterine wall and preventing that 
you're not actually aborting a birth or anything. You're just preventing a birth from actually happening. So um, I'm I'm pregnant every time I ovulate. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Supposedly, yeah. Essentially, All right. okay. yeah. Life starts at ejaculation. Didn't you know this? No, <laughs> it doesn't. God damn you! It starts at erection. You know that. <laughs> Whatever. Life starts at erection. Just ask. He's God. Educate yourself. I know. And they already extended because they said it was a. They're like it's a very narrow ruling. It only applies to these certain um, things. But then the next day on Tuesday they actually extended it um, beyond that, which is exactly what everyone feared, and it only took a day. Mm -hmm. What was who did they extend it to, and what was it for? I'm not 100% on that. I just remember reading a headline and. I'd have to pull it back up, but yeah, no, we can definitely look that up, um, well, and it's I mean, not surprising. Yeah, in order to be consistent with their ruling, they would have to, because, like you said, Amanda, how do you how do you gauge a sincerely held or a strongly held belief? The fuck. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, how, how do you do that? Well, and it was certainly, I think, what was it? The five five Supreme Court justices were all men. So I like I've pointed that out before. None of them have vaginas. Um, <laughs> so again, just one of those things where you know five people who are decide a lot of really they make a lot of really important decisions that affect women's vaginas. Um, <laughs> obviously, know nothing about them. So that's really disturbing. And they're all conservative. Um, and like you said, David, they they didn't block all forms of contraception. Um, it was like definitely like the morning after pill, um, and then an IUD. What? <laughs> why the IUD? Does anybody fucking know why the IUD? Like, why no they chose idea. that one? What's so special about that? Because they don't, don't understand, understand it. They don't understand what it is. It's like it's something that goes up in there. And it, oh and it stops <laughs> it from happening. I don't get it, so I don't like it. Yeah. I can't use it. So I, it, I found. Go ahead. No, no, no. You go ahead. If you have I, say, I found the uh, the thing that says, it says on Tuesday the Supreme Court clarified its decision in Burwell versus Hobby Lobby, um, announcing that its ruling applies the entire contra contraception requirement under the Affordable Care Act and not just the four methods specifically disputed in the case. So Monday it was the four a border fashion a border whatever that word was um, the ones that they thought caused abortions and now on Tuesday they said no applies to all contraception really so Hobby Lobby doesn't have to offer any sort of coverage for contraception whatsoever um, that's what I'm reading See, which is fucking ridiculous. It is, and you know, I am really excited for them to um, cover all of the fucking births that they are going to have to pay for when their employees right. get knocked up because they don't have fucking contraception. Jesus. Yep. And so I, I'm really glad that uh, there's uh, big people in the community that, that have come out to speak against the, against this. Of course, you know George Takei has been a very. I've seen him all over the place talking about this, and um, him talking about the uh, Hobby Lobby boycott. Boycott. I've been boycotting these bitches ever since I found out that they threatened to close down all of their stores if their case wasn't at least heard. They should have. Who yeah. cares? It's like, <laughs> I kind of hope that they would. Well, no, I mean, it's like, you know, you're seriously going to sit here and throw a temper tantrum and say, well, you know what, fuck you, we're going to put all these people out of, uh, you know, out of a job because yeah. we want to be able to force our religious beliefs on our fucking employees. Well, like, and not just force it on their employees, I mean, force it on everyone. Um, yeah, it's the entire yeah it was such a, like, they're... A, it's like a bullying thing to do. It's like what a Walmart would do. Like, oh, you're gonna unionize? <laughs> Bam! Store shut down, motherfucker. Hope you find somewhere else to work. Like, yeah. why would you do that just because you're like getting pissy about it? It's so and stupid. there's they still have so many women employees. What I is know. Wrong with you? I know. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Something else. Something else that I read was that they have a lot of money, a lot of um, I guess shares or stocks um, in pharmaceutical companies that actually make 
these abortion pills and, yep. and IUDs and stuff. So it's like, how much more hypocritical can you get? Oh yeah, well, absolutely. You, I heard another piece where the, this just makes it more hypocritical. That uh, also a lot of their um, products that they sell come from China, and China has probably the highest like per capita abortion rate where it's mandatory abortions and mandatory um, uh, uh, sterilization for some of these women over there. It's like you're just going to be okay with buying the products from a, a country that does this shit that you're trying to fight against? Oh, of course. Yeah, it's of cheap. Of course, absolutely, yeah. Plus, um, one of the things that I just can't, I, it just drives me insane is that, you know, they're still going to cover, um, like, the uh, erectile dysfunction drugs <laughs> for men. Oh, of course, of course. I don't um, even know what to say to that. I don't even know what to say. That doesn't even make any sense. Like, there is no facepalm mean <laughs> that can describe the facepalm. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> yes, get as many erections as you want um, and impregnate as many women as you can. And and I hope you can pay for all those babies because nobody is <laughs> going to help you out. You are so irresponsible for getting pregnant. Yeah. I, it's just, well, ah! Paul has an awesome comment here if you want to oh, take that, Kyra. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. Uh, Paul said, you all need to stop thinking like wealthy middle-aged white men. Okay? Mm Hashtag, you wouldn't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're right. I, I mean, there is that privilege there, sure. I, I, I don't yeah. understand what it's like to have people come after my reproductive rights. I can do whatever I fucking want as a man. Well, I, think, I think the worst thing to me, though, was um, the women that were for it. Like, there was a whole group of women. There's, like, a hashtag called Women in Control that mm -hmm. were for it. And they were like, oh, we don't need handouts. We can handle our own um, birth control. And uh, it was mostly pro-life, pro religious, yuppie, upper-middle-class white women. But... Yeah. No, no surprise there. Well, and they all say, too, like, they're like, you know, it's not a big deal. If you want birth control, just buy it. Yeah. It's your responsibility. It. As if it's that easy for women, like, it, it's such a, it's such a vicious cycle. Yeah. Exactly. You know? I mean, if they can, if they already have kids, or even if they don't, and they don't really have a steady place to live or a good job, it is, re like, birth control can be expensive. Um, going to the doctor is expensive. It's just, yeah, that they think that it's so easy because they've never had to deal with that. They've always had, you know, the money to pay for birth control if they needed to. So they're like, well, if I can do it, you should be able to do it. You're human. Right. Or, or they're in a situation where it's so easy for them to actually be able to plan a pregnancy and they haven't had to deal with the unexpected, holy shit, I am fucking pregnant. What am I going to do with this? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do here? And exactly. it's like contraception can help avoid that entire situation if we just put more out there and give it, you know, g give this to women and have it available to them, then we can avoid these kind of situations. Yes, the rate of abortions is a lot lower. When I saw even a study where they gave out free contraception to a city. I, I want to say it was like in Chicago, um, and the rate of abortions like plummeted. Which is really weird that that is like, I mean, correlation doesn't equal causation, but that but was really on. weird to me. <laughs> um, I, I have a quote. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't care. But I figured out it's um, uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus from Veep, and she said, if men could get pregnant, you could get an abortion at the ATM, which I think <laughs> oh, oh, oh. is totally <laughs> true. <laughs> like... Yeah. Uh, I couldn't even imagine because, you know, you have w lines at some ATMs. Could you imagine how long the wait would be then if you had that on there? It wouldn't be that long. Do you know why? Because these rich white men would put billions of dollars into science to figure out a safe way to get an abortion quickly and effectively. Mm -hmm. It would be just like a shot of radiation. Into it would, exactly, <laughs> to your... To their uterus or 
Deuterus. <laughs> Deuterus. <laughs> Deuterus. <laughs> wow. All right. I Text think this episode Deuterus. <laughs> yeah. We may have to cut it off at Deuterus. <laughs> um, some parallel dimension here. There's a bunch of men screaming out. Um, <laughs> so we are having to cut this off. It is 1030. We've gone on our hour here. Um I guess, Nancy, is there anything that you wanted to say or that you felt you didn't have, you know, the opportunity to comment on? Pimp yourself a little bit here? Not at all. Thank you guys for having me. Um, anybody that's watching, you can follow me on Twitter at Nancy Drew P.I. Awesome. And um, Kyra, you uh, were actually... <laughs> I like quiet. the arms out. <laughs> Kyra! <laughs> is there anything Kyra. that... Bring it in. <laughs> Bring it in. Come on. Was there anything that you wanted to say? You were actually a little quiet tonight. Yeah, sorry. I did not feel prepared. We stayed up uh, for that LAN party last night. So. Oh, yeah. I'm still tired. Well, yeah, and also, you know, kind of like we were talking about, it, it, Nancy was very, very well informed, a lot more than, than we were, so just didn't feel right <laughs> to, like, interrupt her for, you know, as long as, I didn't, comments. as long as I didn't ramble. No, no, no. That's great. We, we all ramble all the time. So it's oh, not, yeah. It's Definitely on this show. Welcome here. Um, and Amanda, anything that you wanted to say or anything that you want to pimp out so I don't have to do your pimpins? Of course, yeah. yeah. Um, so you can see down here on my, my little thing here. Blink, blink. Um, follow me on Twitter at AmandArg. That's with five R's, just FYI. Um, you can go to my blog, my parenting blog, humanistmom.com. Um, I also co-host Godless Family on Tuesdays. That's at 6 o'clock Pacific time um, with Aubrey Adrianson, and that's about secular parenting as well. And I am also um, continuing a segment with a new co-host um, for Coranify Me, called Unveiled, and it's actually going to be Kyra and I for the next one. It's going to be the second segment, and we are really excited for it. So you should definitely look out for some of the promos. We'll be recording that soon. Um, and, yeah, obviously you can find me on here when my husband lets me out of the kitchen to come and do the show. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so um, I guess we'll go ahead and get on to the pimpins here. Nobody put pimpins on our worksheet here, so I'm just going to try and... Uh, well, dude, you do so much pimpin' at the beginning of every show. Like, I know. There's a paragraph of pimpin'. I know. Well, pimpin' of other people, because Steve wants us to start pimping other people. Um, I guess because he's always involved in our show some way, everybody check out Coranify Me. Uh, Paul, he was here earlier tonight. And... Oh, don't be like that. Show him some love, man. Okay. Check out Paul. He's so cool and awesome. <laughs> um, also, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, man, we have some actual big news coming up here. Uh, it's going to be next week, right? Episode yes. 43? Yeah, that's right. We've been kind of holding back on saying anything on this, but we're actually going to be having uh, Russell Glasser from the Atheist Experience in the ACA in Austin um, is going to be on the show with us. Steve and I are going to be talking to him, and we're going to be freaking out the whole time, hopefully. Oh, no, don't. You guys. I know. We talked about this. We talked about this. You can't we're do that. We're not going to fanboy. We're not going to do it. Get shit together, David. <laughs> you got to be professional about this. Right. So check that out next week on the 13th. We're same time, same place. At least he hasn't said that he has any problem with our time here. Um, so, again, check us out on our website, www.thoughtprophets.com. Find us on iTunes, Podbean. I think we're also on Stitcher and something else. Steve was mentioning it. But just search for ProfitCast. Give us a like. Give us a favorite. Follow us. Um, check us out on Twitter, at ProfitCast. And join in our Facebook dis discussion, simply searching for Thought Profits. Check us out on YouTube. That's the show. Nancy, thank you so much for coming on here. We'll definitely have to have you back. Yay. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And you have a godless night.